In this video, we are going to take a closer look at the fascinating leadership phenomenon called the Pygmalion or Rosenthal effect. It was first discovered in the classroom, but you'll find its effects everywhere. And we are going to study the Pygmalion effect using a famous army experiment. Imagine a 15-week army training course. 105 soldiers are assigned to four instructors. And before the course starts, each instructor is given the following message. We have collected a lot of data regarding the trainees you will receive in the coming days. It consists of psychological tests, grades from previous courses and ratings by previous commanders. Based on this information, we have predicted the command potential of the soldiers you are going to receive. High are the great soldiers, regular the average ones, and unfortunately there is a few soldiers where we don't have any data. Please learn their names and their scores by heart before they arrive. It's important to know that at the time these four instructors didn't know that the classification we were given are completely random. In other words, the soldier listed as high command potential could very well be the worst soldier in the group or vice versa. After the 16 weeks course, each soldier was tested. The outcome? Those soldiers that got marked high command potential significantly outperformed their classmates. Those with an average command potential scored the lowest, and the third group, those with an unknown performance potential, ended up in the middle. And the difference was quite big. It was 15% between the first group and the last group. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that strange? So when we believe a team member has the ability to be a great performer, our belief becomes reality. The performance expectations we have for our team members is a self-fulfilling prophecy. That's the Pygmalion effect. But how does it work? In short, as soon as the instructors believed that some soldiers had better abilities than others, they started managing those individuals differently. Raising expectations triggers a leadership process that results in superior performers. So better leadership in turn has a direct positive effect on the subordinate's performance. It kickstarts positive effects. Just imagine the extra boost you get when somebody is giving you positive attention. Leaders get the performance they expect. When we believe and expect low performance, our expectations kickstart a negative spiral that leads to low performance. But otherwise, if we can imagine everybody to be a great performance performer, if we apply a can-do management style to everyone in the team, when we believe our team members have what it takes to succeed, like those four instructors did with those soldiers with a high command potential, the chance that they will actually succeed will be much higher. So the Pygmalion effect teaches us that we have to be careful in what we believe. Most of us have the habit of labeling team members. Maria is a high performer, Joe is average, Eva reached her ceiling, and Mike is a low performer. But our labels are self-fulfilling prophecies. And for those at the end that end up in the high performance category, that's great. They'll get the leader they deserve. But for those that we categorize as average or low performer, it's not the case. Because when we don't expect greatness, our leadership style won't be either. And by doing so, we contribute to their failure. So if we want to increase our team success rate, we have to reconsider the relationship we have with all our team members, not only the ones with high command potential. We need to create a can-do environment, a place where we expect success from every team member, not only a few high performers. Leaders who believe all team members will succeed will outperform those that don't.